G'day Bomber fans, there has been a lot going on this week in the trade world. I almost wish I released my trade video a week later than I did, but I didn't. So I thought I would update you guys on one particular piece of news because I'm seeing a lot of Essendon fans confused by the ongoing Darcy Parish contract saga. So I'm going to go over that and talk about Parish and his place in the team, whether or not I think he should stay. So let's get into it. So Darcy Parish has always been a player who waits on contract decisions. If you remember back to 2021, he made us all a little bit nervous by waiting until late in the year to sign. Uh, that was when Merritt signed a big deal as well. And even then, it wasn't a monumental contract for Parrish. It was a two-year deal. So he was still unsure of his place at Essendon and I guess not willing to rule out a move down the track. Two-year deals are usually what you find younger players getting. That, that year, Parrish was an All-Australian. Um, so he was well and truly a, a star of the team. Uh, plus, it took him through to free agency. So he clearly wanted the opportunity to at least test the waters when he became a free agent, which he is now. And that brings us to a pretty relevant topic, free agency. For those who don't uh, know, it's pretty much a way for players to leave clubs without a trade needing to be agreed upon. Darcy Parish is an unrestricted free agent, so if another club, Geelong for example, agreed on a contract with Parish, we could hypothetically keep him still if we matched it in length and by money, but that is never really what clubs want to do. You want to sign up these players beforehand to keep a nice little relationship going. The issue is, it is now round 24. If a player hasn't signed before then, historically, they are on the way out. But Parrish wants to stay. He has said he wants to stay. So why has the contract not being agreed upon? Well, there are reportedly three key factors as to why he hasn't signed. We will start with the simplest, the length of the contract. We are apparently willing to sign Parrish for five years, all but making him a bomber life. Parrish, though, wants a life with no possibility of parole. He was involved in that 120-point uh, belting and wanted to inflict further pain on himself by staying for six years. So that, to me, clearly shows that Parrish loves the club and doesn't want to leave. We want him to stay. He wants to stay, but there are some real issues with the contract, not just the length. He not only wants an extra year on top of his um, the five that we are offering, he wants a lot more money. Parrish is believed to want up to $100,000 more than what we are offering. Rival clubs apparently see a 50 to 100k difference in terms, which is a lot of money. Uh, Parrish already signed a fairly lucrative deal back in 2021. Other list managers say he's worth around the $800,000 mark right now. The thing with long contracts is you really have to trust the player's longevity to commit to them because they are almost always very expensive deals. Some will question if he is worth that money. There are definitely players worse than Parrish right now earning much more than him. Uh, we are actually very strict with our contracts. Uh, we rarely pay players players that extra cash they want. It's why contract negotiations like this tend to extend their welcome. So he wants an extra year on his contract. He wants more money. The final aspect is the most confusing though. It's all about the collective bargaining agreement, the CBA as you will often hear. This is just about pay again, but it's a league wide thing. The AFL Players Association and the AFL have been trying to come to an agreement regarding the minimum player contract prices and things like that. Why it involves Parrish, we are apparently refusing to allow his contract to rise if the CBA was to rise. So if players were to be paid more, Parrish wouldn't on his deal. Is this stingy? A little bit. And it shows why there is a clear-cut standoff with this contract. We want him to be paid less without the possibility of a rise with the CBA and for less time than he desires. There are three areas that we need to agree on and right now we are not close to agreeing on any it seems. Do I think this deal will get done? The good news is he clearly wants to stay. He wants to be a bomber for life. He went out of his way early in the year to say he wants to stay. There was a Channel 7 news piece where he said he loves life under Scott. So the last thing he wants from this is to leave a club that will pay him, uh, sorry, leave to a club that will pay him more. That may well happen. Geelong are really interested, but that isn't what Parrish wants. He is not chasing money because he could be getting more elsewhere. He is chasing what he believes to be a fair deal at a club he wants to stay at. Obviously him and his management do not believe this deal is fair and you can see why. We are refusing to budge on certain aspects and to be honest, I don't mind it. I kind of like it. I don't want Parrish to leave, but I respect the fact that we are not rolling over and adding extra digits for him to sign on the dotted line as soon as possible. It's stingy, but it's tough. You can trust us not to have any salary cap issues with an attitude like this. Kane Corns said something along those lines, actually, and I just want to say I'm not a Kane Corns fan. He has some outrageous takes, but I think he is as close to right as he can be when he talks about us being stern with this and the positives that brings. Uh, sure, it creates tension for the short term, but it's better to have a 
bit of tension than sign up a player for more money than what he deserves and make him feel like he is the king of the world. And no one is bigger than the footy club. Not saying Parrish is arrogant or anything. This is probably more on his management than him. But there is always that risk of signing a player on a big contract and seeing them become complacent. I think we would avoid that with the way we are negotiating this deal, which I like. Now, I know a lot of you want Parrish gone for draft picks or trade bait. Uh, so what you want to know is if he was to leave, would we get compensation? And the answer is yes. We would get a first round pick for a player like Parrish, most likely near the top 10. It's hard to know without Geelong having offered him a contract yet because the compensation is decided by the contract the free agent agrees to with his new team. There are measures and there are the bans that have to be met, but with that price tag of seven hundred or $100,000, you would say around the top 10 mark seems fair, which would be handy if he was to leave. Uh, worst case scenario, obviously, but you've got to realise a draft pick is just a chance of getting a star. We would lose an All-Australian midfielder, one of the elite clearance contested possession players in the game, and get a player that could possibly be a star down the track. With our draft uh, track record, I wouldn't back us in to nail our choice either. Trust us to say goodbye to Parrish and bring in a 150 centimeter outside midfielder. I know the topic of Parrish and his worth at the club divides fans. I personally think he is an important player to our team. He is one of the very best clearance midfielders, not just at Essendon, but in the comp. He is ranked third for clearances, uh, sixth for contested possessions, second for inside 50s, 14th for ground ball gets, and 23rd for score involvement. So those are all average per game amounts, um, not overall because he's missed time, obviously. We talk about his ball use, but we often forget his game is best within packs. He is fantastic at distributing the ball in close counters for the likes of Merritt and Co. And, and other classy midfielders to use it. We take away Parrish. We significantly reduce our likelihood of winning the contested game, which is what we're so bad at right now. So I think Parrish is a big part of our team, and I personally want him to stay for the five or six years that he might. Do I think we should pay overs for him? I don't. I think it's never a good idea to pay a player more than they are worth, but I really want to see this deal get done. I would much rather see Parrish stay at Essendon than us get a top 10 pick who will take a few years to come good. If we're really um, in the business of finals and premierships soon, then Parrish should stay. That is just my opinion, though. I get that we all disagree a little bit, but that's really all I got to say. I just thought I would make a little quick video about it because it's pretty topical right now. So let me know down below what you want to see happen. I should say it's a good draft this season, so those are asking for a top 10 pick instead of Parrish aren't wrong. We all just have different views of what we want to see happen with this club, and that's fair. No one is right or wrong, but that's that. Actually, before I wrap up, a quick shout out to Henry McFligson. He is a passionate Dons fan who loves nothing more than watching Jake Stringer play. It's his 10th birthday today, so happy birthday, but that's all. Cheers, Dons fans.